So now, let us look at the human circulatory system. I already told it has got different parts like heart, blood and blood vessels. So the first thing we are going to discuss about the heart, human heart. So human heart is a very very important organ which has to work continuously throughout the life. So if it stops beating, the life ends there because the supply of energy, the nutrients and the oxygen stopped when the heart beats stop. So where is this heart located? The heart is located in the chest cavity in our body. So in the trunk we have two cavities, abdominal cavity and thoracic cavity or the chest cavity. So in the chest cavity, here the heart is located between the lungs. On either side there are lungs. So it is embedded in between these lungs, there is space, slightly towards the left side of our lung. So slightly towards left side. The right lung is much bigger compared to left lung because it is uh, giving some place to the heart to accommodate. So this is the position of the heart. Heart is a pear shaped organ. The heart shape if you observe that it is wide at its the top end and it is narrow or pointed towards the lower end. So you see the upper end it is broader, lower end is narrow. It is in the shape of a pear. And the size of a heart, the size of the heart of a person will be the size of the fist. So this is the size of my fist. This will be the size of the heart. So approximately, this is an approximate calculation showing that to get an idea how much size the heart will be. So the heart is located here. It is both sides, it is cushioned by lungs. And at the same time, it is protected externally by the rib case. Rib case is the bony case made up of bones called as ribs which is with muscles, it is covering the chest cavity. So the rib case, it is giving protection, at the same time the lungs they are giving protection as it is to be very well protected. So see how much of protection is given. Along with these protections, we find some other protection around the heart. If you see the heart, the heart is covered by two membranes called as pericardial pericardial membranes. Again the heart is covered by two membranes called as pericardial membranes. So the two membranes between the two membranes it has got outer pericardial membrane, inner pericardial membrane, outer and inner. So between this outer and inner pericardial membrane there is some fluid in between which is called as pericardial fluid. So this pericardial fluid, pericardial membrane, they give protection from shocks, they absorb the shock, jerks, physical injuries. So these are all absorbed by this pericardial fluid and pericardial membranes give protection to the heart. Now let us look at the internal parts of the heart, the other features of the heart, the cross section of the heart. If you observe the human heart in mammals, we find the heart is four chambered. There are four rooms in the heart, in human heart. Here we can observe the four rooms. One, two, three, four. So here we observe the four rooms. This is not a room, this is a blood vessel, a broad and thick blood vessel. This is not the room of the heart. There are the four rooms. We call them as chambers chambers of our heart. So how many chambers are there? Four chambers are there. The upper chambers are called as atria. Atria. These are called as atria. And the lower chambers are called as ventricles. There are two atria, two ventricles. Left atria, right atria, right ventricle, left ventricle. So these are the four chambers. If you observe, the atria are smaller compared to ventricles. Ventricles are much bigger compared to atria. And moreover, the ventricles, they have very thick walls, thick walls. But whereas atria will have very thin walls. So now, what is the main function of the heart? 
Here it performs two major tasks. One, it is to collect the pure blood from the lungs. Pure blood in the sense, the blood which contains oxygen and the blood which is free from carbon dioxide. So where such blood is found in the lungs? Because in the lungs exchange of gases takes place. So after exchange of gases, the blood is filled with oxygen and the blood is free of carbon dioxide. Such blood is called as pure blood or oxygenated blood it is to be brought to the heart. So the heart gets the oxygenated blood. Now what it should do with the oxygenated blood? The first task is completed for the heart that is collecting the oxygenated blood from the lungs. What is the second task? Pumping this oxygenated blood to various parts of our body, to head, to trunk, hands and legs and all the other cells. Pumping. First thing is collecting oxygenated blood from the lungs. Second thing is pumping the oxygenated blood to all the other parts of the body. At the same time, the heart pumps again deoxygenated blood to lungs for oxygenation. So in this way, the heart it pumps the blood to different parts for different purposes. And the heart it collects the blood. So collecting, pumping, collecting, pumping. Now let us see, the heart is connected to various blood vessels. In these blood vessels, certain blood vessels, some blood vessels are called as arteries, some blood vessels are called as veins. Now if you see that this one, this is called as systemic, this is the systemic aorta. Systemic artery, major systemic artery. And if you see this one, this is pulmonary artery or pulmonary aorta or artery. See, this is the one which is branched into two. And this one is vena cava, means major vein, vena cava. So you can see this having connections from down, here one connection, here one connection. This is called superior vena cava, superior from the top of our body, from the head and all, the blood is collected and this is inferior vena cava. This is superior vena cava, this is inferior vena cava. I am talking about the major blood vessels right now. So this is the vein, this is a vein which is connected to the right atria. Right atria is connected to a bigger veins, two bigger veins. One is from the top, one is from the bottom. The top one is called a superior vena cava and the bottom one is inferior vena cava. Now, this is the systemic aorta. You can see a very big ring like one. That is systemic aorta. What does this systemic aorta does? It supply the oxygenated blood to various parts of our body. So that is systemic aorta, systemic artery. And pulmonary artery, this is the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery, it pumps the blood to lungs for oxygenation. It pumps the blood to lungs for oxygenation. So these are the different uh, arteries and veins we find. Here we find pulmonary veins, pulmonary veins which bring the oxygenated blood from the lungs. Pulmonary uh, veins bring the oxygenated blood from the uh, lungs to the heart. So uh, if you observe the major differences between the arteries and veins, arteries are very rigid and there is more pressure in the arteries because arteries, they carry the blood with high pressure because the blood is to be supplied to various parts. So they are very rigid, more rigid, arteries are more rigid blood vessels which usually carry oxygenated blood. The chief function of the arteries is to carry the oxygenated blood. The veins are less rigid, which carry the deoxygenated 